Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to Art on Arkansas. Right now, I'm taking a moment to go and share this live video because today we will be interviewing the Yamina Cummings for Art on Arkansas. Hey, 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 there we go. All right. What's up, everybody? It's the poet, the artist, the creator, and energy curator, Drika Writes, and we are live in the 501, and you know what's up. Today, we are interviewing the Yamina Cummings for Art on Arkansas. And for those of you who are not familiar, Art on Arkansas is a bi-weekly artist interview where I interview local artists. And I don't know if everybody's seen the announcement, but I'm actually, this is my last Art on Arkansas interview with the Arkansas Arts Council, but I'm super excited because today is gonna be filled with so many gems and so much fun, so much knowledge. Um, I got the talented, the beautiful Yamina Cummings who will be joining us today and just sharing her journey, um, uh, her journey in arts with us. So I'll be bringing her on in just a second, but just a couple of announcements for anybody who's watching this. Um, if you know of any high school students or schools who will be interested in participating in Poetry Out Loud, please email us at the Arkansas Arts Council to get involved because Poetry Out Loud is a great opportunity for students in high school to have a chance to participate in poetry and get a chance to win money. So there's three levels to the competition. We have a school-wide competition, a state level competition, which will happen March 11th. And then there's a national competition where students have a chance to compete for $20,000 for first place, $10,000 for second place, $5,000 third place, and for fourth through 12th, $1,000 for poetry. So if you know any teachers or schools, dealing with high school students that will be interested in participating, be sure to check out ArkansasArts.org and look up Poetry Out Loud and how your school can get involved. So coming to the stage today, we have again for Art on Arkansas this week, Miss Yamina Cummings. I'm about to bring her on and everybody that's already tuned in, please go ahead and share this video. And as we go throughout, this interview, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it below. All right, coming to the stage. Give me a drum roll, please. Amina, come in. Ah. <laughs> uh -oh. Let's see. Hello, hello. There we go. Hi. Thank you, Thank you for joining us today for Art on Arkansas. I've been telling everybody about you. I'm super excited to have you. And before we even get started, I want everybody to know how I know this superstar. So oh, stop. <laughs> Y'all see her. Come on now. It's the hat. So, <laughs> it's always a hat. It's always a hat. <laughs> I met Yamina in college at UCA, and I actually asked her to perform in one of my shows and she just did it so willingly and she just blew me away with her poetry performance. Now, this lady is a woman of many talents, but I initially encountered her as a poet. <laughs> but right. so throughout this interview, you'll learn that she does so much more because as you can see, or you can imagine, she is a fashionista. She will always be dressed to the top. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. And I even seen that you you curate some um set designs too. So yes, yes, I do. Look, and I'll let her get all into that. But again, I met her in college way back in the day. I shouldn't say that because it sounds like we <laughs> like <can>. we old. 
<laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> but I'm so happy to know her and so glad that we've been able to keep in contact. I've gotten to work with her on her own shows where she did a social justice fashion show at the Capitol. And that was amazing. She's done a women's empowerment brunch. So she's for empowering women and people of all backgrounds. And I'm just appreciative to know you and to get started. Yay. Can you <laughs> I would like to, you know, give you a moment to introduce yourself and let us know how you got started in the arts and your art mediums. Sure, sure. So again, thank you, Edrica, for that beautiful introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, it's such an honor to know you and to, like, like you said earlier, we're both like growing and who we are and who we who we're becoming. Um, and I think it's so beautiful to do that with people that you knew before. Um, mm -hmm. And so thank you for having me on the show. Um, like Drinka said, my name is Yamina Cummings. Um, I am a woman, a, a Jill of all trades. <laughs> um, I own my own business called Design 360 and Photography. Um, as Jerika also mentioned, I have a publication um, called The Black Magazine. I've been honestly taking a break from that just because I've been trying to focus on so many different things. I don't want to be a Jill of all trades and a master of none. So I've been trying to, you know, stick to one lane and then master that and then move on. So, um, but definitely be expecting another publication coming soon. Um, but yeah, so you asked a question about how I got started um, in the arts, and I feel like I technically got started um, when I was like in the sixth grade, so around 12 years old. I didn't even know that I was getting started, but um, I was a person like at school who always wanted to take pictures and like literally orchestrating photo shoots every week at school. I had this is before the iPhone, so I had a Polaroid camera. I literally would beg my mom to take me every every week uh, to Walgreens or Walmart or whatever and get me like a little Kodak or <laughs> Polaroid camera. And I would tell all my friends at school, like, hey, y'all, we're taking pictures tomorrow. Put on a cute outfit or wear it blue, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, and so I would really take pictures and um, get them developed every week. And I had this wall that I was like just adding to it every week. Um, but at that time, I really didn't know that I wanted to be a photographer. I just enjoyed keeping memories um, and just like being around people that I, you know, I was friends with or that I loved or cared about. Um, so I was really just big on memory. And because I never, you know, my main, like the main careers that I thought were successful were like lawyers, doctors, scientists, you know, different things like that or working in the corporate world, but I never seen photography as an industry or a career. So um, I later on met my, met my love for photography again when my mom bought me a um, a camera three years ago for uh, Christmas and literally for the first six months to a year of my business I used that same camera I knew really nothing about photography but I knew that I was going to get into it uh, so fast forward a year and a half later that's where I, I started my business really just being a photographer um, my business was called a more lens photography and um, I then realized I wanted to do more like with design and graphics and website design and all of that. So I had to come up with a new name. So that's where, honestly, there's a whole a whole background story on Design 360. Um, and I chose Design 360 because um, I always thought everything comes full circle. You know, being that I started, you know, photography about, you know, when I was 15 years ago, when I was 12 years old, um, and then, you know, here I am today, still in that industry, but now, so that's pretty much how I got started. All right, now, now <laughs> since you've been having this love for photography since you were younger, like, is there anybody in your family that inspired you in any kind of way? Um, I wouldn't say, I think, the biggest thing with family that inspired me was just capturing moments. Um, so that was really my tagline and my mission statement when I first got started. Um, it's more, and it's actually my, my tagline now, it's more than just um, a vision, it's a story. Um, and so I always love to capture the moment. I wouldn't say there's not any photographers um, close to me and my family, but I do admire a lot of local photographers and, you know, of course, celebrity photographers as well. And I always just found, found a love for 
um, the vision and the story behind a picture. I always seen it more than just a picture on the wall or a picture in a magazine. I always try to find the reason or the vision or story behind it. I love it. Okay, so what has been some highlights? Well, no, actually, I want to go back because if you could break it down a little bit um, sure. with the poetry, you know, what sparked you? What got you into that? Oh, yeah. So poetry. I forgot about that. So that's honestly another another element of art, of course. Um, I really found myself writing a long time ago. Honestly, it was a way that I was always expressive, but I never really told my truth only to myself you know I always everything that I wanted to say was a little bit I know why I was sugar-coated because I'm you know I try to be nice to everybody <laughs> and um any anytime that I have something to say or my feelings were heard about something I always tried to be like comforting um and say it in a nicer way but my art and my poetry is where I found myself being the most honest um and so I started I started writing just like journaling probably when I was like 13 or so um and then I realized that I wasn't just writing it was like rhyming and of course rhyming wasn't always isn't always poetry but I found myself so writing I'm trying to like match with the last word um, and then so I just started, you know, doing that a little bit more. And I really fell in love with watching other poets, um, you being one of them. And I really started um, watching a lot of YouTube videos and like Def Jam poetry and all of that. Um, but then when I got to UCA, um, like I said, you're at Sex on the Stage. Um, was really so amazing to me because I got to see so many people perform live, which was new because always I was always watching YouTube videos. So it was different. I felt the energy. I loved, I loved the art um, and I loved like hearing people express themselves. And so it was where I found myself being comfortable. Uh, I don't perform as much anymore, um, but I try to find a space for it every now and then. Like at my social justice for the Black Magazine, um, the fashion show, um, I performed a little piece there and I did, um, a Juneteenth um, celebration last year and I performed there as well so I try to find my space but I don't do it as often as I would like just because I'm so busy with everything else that I write as much as I like to but I definitely do it every now and then. Mm -hmm. I love it and I like that you you know you keep mentioning how busy you are but you know what I think it's so interesting um, when people they talk about being busy and they always talk about their outlet being the arts so mm -hmm. as an artist who's busy doing art stuff what do you <laughs> right. do <laughs> like what do you do to release or to relax what is your escape so honestly my escape um I would say one of my favorite escapes is traveling um it's it's just it's another way that I think is um experiencing cultures um so I really like to I like to travel domestically of course but I also like to travel um internationally and go to different countries because you just get to immerse in different cultures um I this is probably a little irrelevant but I'll tie it back to the question um but I studied abroad um it was my junior year of college and I went to Costa Rica and I thought it was the most incredible experience I ever had. Um, and since that experience, I still tell everybody I come in contact with, like you definitely have to study abroad. It's um, it just kind of immerses you in a culture and it makes you it makes you uncomfortable in a way just because obviously their first language in Costa Rica is in English. So you have to have some knowledge of speaking a different language and it, it humbles you because if you've ever had um, a conversation or been connected with someone else that their first language isn't English, you become a little bit more sincere about their struggles or challenges when they can't speak to you or you feel like they're not speaking to you pro in proper English. But, you know, um, I have very broken Spanish. I will be honest with you. I spent almost a full summer there and I did I'm still not fluent, but you know, I can pick up on words. Um, but I would say traveling is one of my escapes. And on a day to day, I would say listening to podcasts, listening to positive inspiration um, is kind of my escape. Another way, another form of art. But um, I definitely, I don't really listen um, to or I don't watch TV very often just because I always, anytime I'm like, still I want to be feeding my mind um definitely with positive energy because I believe your environment is everything 
Um, and so I always spent a lot of time. I was spend, I was like 90% of my day spent listening to like podcasts, even while I'm working. Um, but if I'm if I'm like folding laundry or doing something like that, or cooking even, I still try to listen to a podcast. So I would say that is one of my my escapes and and writing sometimes. Too. I love it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. This actually helps lead into my next question. I wanted to ask, what have been some highlights of your career? Sure. Wow. Um, so I feel like there has been some very different highlights in my career. Um, I'll probably, let me see what else. Sorry. So I would say um, my first highlight I'll speak on was um, being very persistent, like the start of my career after my college, like after I graduated college. Um, so originally, just a brief background, um, I went to UCA, graduated from UCA, go Bears. <laughs> um, uh, but I graduated from UCA and um, I, before, before I went, like when I graduated high school, I was planning to leave. Like I told my mom, I'm like, I'm leaving Arkansas. I hate it here. Like I'm leaving, you know? Um, so I had this like very big plan to leave Arkansas, but my mother, um, she got sick. And so I decided to stay. We're really close. And so I decided to stay, but I told her when she got better and everything, um, I told her I was leaving as soon as I graduated college. Um, and so I graduated May 6th and I left May 13th. And I moved, I got a job in, in, in Destin and I did um, like, it was with marketing and events and different things like that. Um, but I spent my time there, but it was, it was really just my transition. I knew that I wasn't going to stay. I just wanted to make sure that I could do it. So it was away from home, nine hour drive, um, but still close enough to where I could come home on the weekend. But I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm ready to do it. I can go out, go out into the world. I'm going to like look for me a job. First, I was fixated on living in Miami. Don't know why, but I was just like, I'm moving to Miami, you know, because I was already in Florida. Um, So I started looking for a bunch of jobs there and just nothing was working. So, you know, of course, God's like, move on, find something else. Then I started to look in Atlanta and I had a few opportunities, but nothing was working out there either. So I was like, you know what, let's let's move to California. Let's see what's in California. Um, And I didn't want to move to L.A. I had been to LA a few times, but I was just like, mm, I don't really think that's where I want to live. So I never, I honestly never been to San Diego in my life. Never been there before. Didn't know what it was like. Just hoped I liked it. Um, but anyways, long story short, I applied to over 300 jobs in a three to four month span. Yes, <laughs> over um, 300 jobs in a three to four month span. And it's crazy that I was, I was, cause I was just so ambitious and, um, I knew that I wanted to leave. And so I was applying, applying, applying literally every day. I had a schedule to how many I was going to apply to a day. Um, and I ended up, I would say out of the 300 jobs, I probably heard back from 50, like, you know, had a second interview or interview or, you know, some sort of next step. Um, and then I would say out of those 50, I probably got less than 10 offers, but I ended up going with one um, that led me into the most, I felt like the most prominent position in my career. Um, I was hired on as a project manager and my first project was in Bangkok, Thailand. And the most I'd ever seen from Bangkok was hangovers. <laughs> you know, I was like, I can't believe, uh, or but I skipped, I skipped. Um, so before I get to be a cop anyway I ended up getting that job I got the job offer it was like some somewhere towards the end of December and I had three weeks to move there so in that three weeks I had to find a, a home I had to get my obviously electricity water all of that turned on and then also um I ended up getting a new car in that time too. So my mom, like within three days, me and my mom and my little sister, we drove from Arkansas. Like I had moved from, literally had to still move from Destin, moved from Destin, went home, spent a little time with my family. Um, And then me and my mom and my little sister, we drove from Arkansas to California in two days and moved 
in that same day, like the same day that we got there, I had my furniture moved in, all of that, whatever. Um, so that was a really big thing, step in my career, because I knew, I didn't know anybody in San Diego. Like I said, I had never been there before. Um, I didn't even see my apartment physically until I got there. <laughs> I, you know, so it was a really bold move, um, but it was one that I never regret. Like I really put myself out there and um, and it worked out. You know, like I said, I really got to, I got to experience like 10 different countries. Um, I got to visit 10 different countries in one year with that, with that position. And it just showed me so much. Like I never heard of business class. I got to buy business class every time. And as a young African American girl, um, you know, I always did it look like I was supposed to be there. So I had some experiences with, you know, even flight attendants asking me if I was in the right line. And so it was really, yeah, it was really. Um, really different, <laughs> really different environment. Um, especially I was the youngest. I was actually the youngest um, and only black person that worked for that company. Um, and so that was really big deal as well. And I don't, honestly, I don't even like to say that because I feel like there should be more of us in the room. Um, but again, you know, it was very eye-opening because I was, I think I got that job when I was 23 or 24. It was 23. Um, and so it was really eye opening and it was just one of the biggest highlights of my career. I love that. Mm -hmm. Super dope. Yeah. So here's my juicy question. You know, yes. <laughs> when I ask you this, it can be any kind of artist, but give me okay. your top five artists. Okay. Okay. I would say top five. Um, one of my favorite artists is Maya Angelou. Um, of course, you know, she is, she left her voice. And I, I feel like that is one of the things that I, I aspire to do. Um, and then, of course, I have to say my girl Beyonce. Um, you know, that probably sounds cliche, but I mean, who, like, I don't think she's not on anybody's favorites list. She's definitely <laughs> on mine. Um, um, and then also Rihanna, you know, I feel like she is she just literally blew the world away with her career doing everything um, that they said she couldn't. So um, she just took her artistry career and made it to like this billion dollar corporation. And I just think she's phenomenal. Um, and then also I would say I have two Tylers. So one Tyler would be Tyler Perry, um, just because I aspire to be um, in the creative world um like I said production creative direction and things like that and I love how Tyler Perry has used his imagination and created these characters that a lot of us can relate to um and just that he's so like this black man you know owns actually owns his studio you know he's not owned by anybody else he's not a part of a bigger corporation he's Tyler Perry Studios and I think that's phenomenal um, and then my other Tyler would be Tyler Mitchell. So uh, the the first black photographer that produced the big artist um, for Vogue. So he was the one who did that um, Beyonce portrait uh, that was in Vogue. And I think he is, I think he, at the time he was 18, 17 or 18. Um, and just to like shape the world like that and open up so many doors to show other 18 year olds and other artists um that they can do it too i think that is phenomenal yes. you know, this time is going by so fast but <laughs> right um before we get off i would like to ask um what do you have coming up and what advice would you give any upcoming artists um, so I'll start with the upcoming advice. Um, I would say, so as, um, as an artist, I feel like there's not enough in the education system that shows how profitable being an artist and using your own creative juices can be. Um, you know, we see it. We see that there's somebody producing the videos. We see that there's somebody producing these photo shoots, but we don't look at it and put ourselves in those positions like, oh, I can do that because there's somebody, little black girl like me, producing the photo shoots for Beyonce. There's somebody like you that's producing the photo shoots 
for Brianna, you know, whatever. And I just think that um, we just have to put ourselves in those positions. Um, a lot of this kind of goes back to where I am in my career. A lot of these, a lot of the jobs that I was applying for at first, I was kind of scared and intimidated, like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I've never done that before. But you have to just believe in yourself. Um, that would be one of my biggest things. Believe in yourself. Um, and whatever you're dreaming, dream bigger because um, there's so much more for you. You know, you, you, your dreams are just a preview of, of what's to come. So don't look at it like I'm just dreaming. I'm just, you know, that I think this could happen, but maybe it won't, or it probably won't because I'm not. As long as you put that energy behind it um, and you believe in who you are, it can definitely happen for you. And then my second um, thing would be to say, um, this is a quote from E.T., Eric Thomas. If you don't know him, go look him up. Let's go get yourself some daily motivation from E.T. Um, but his, my favorite quote of his is, 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 if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. So you have to want it. You know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to be this person one day. Of course, I believe in manifestation. I believe that if you manifest it, it will come true. But you have to actually believe in what you're saying. You can't just be like, I'm going to be a millionaire and then you're waking up at 10 o'clock a.m. every day. Um, that's fine if you're waking up at 10 a.m., but if you're waking up at 10 a.m., then you need to be up until 11, 12, you know what I'm saying? Um, so just just definitely believe in yourself. Um, and if you want it, go for it. And then also success is on the other, on the far side of failure. Um, so sometimes you have to fail your way to success. Denzel Washington said it best, um, fail hard, fail fast, and fail forward. Um, just because you learn, you learn from your failures. A lot of people give up um, when they fail, or a lot of people feel like, oh, this must not be for me, but you're just learning more. And so just keep going and applying what you're um, what you're learning to um, or what you're wanting to learn. Um, so that was I know that was a full answer, but I'll answer your other question about um, what I have coming up. So actually, as um, Design 360, my business, I'm offering a lot of stuff coming up for Black Friday. I hope y'all business owners out there are getting yourself ready for a Black Friday and artists as well. Um, but I'm actually. Um, I just released this content, well, I haven't released it yet, but I just actually put a content creation survey on my on my page because I want to do like a content creation bootcamp. Um, working with so many business owners, I create a lot of websites, produce a lot of photos for a lot of businesses, and I realized they don't know uh, necessarily like photography, uh, or no, I'm sorry, know how to create their own content. And so what I want to do is kind of help people put them in the place to be able to produce their own content. So if you're interested in something like that, go to uh, design360lens.com and fill out the content creation bootcamp survey if you want to do it. Um, it's just something that I wanted to survey before so that if I do produce it, I know what to outline in the program. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything else that I have coming up is on my website as well. I know I'm a blabbermouth, so I'll keep going. <laughs> this is good. This has been good. I know we got yes. some gems from this but thank you so much for tuning in with us for art on arkansas y'all be sure to check her out yelena cummings on facebook and to check out everything that she has going book a photo shoot because i actually had a photo shoot with her and it was amazing she has a new camera so i have to <laughs> yes 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 great quality work um, she's worth utilizing. Um, if you have any headshots that you need for your business yes. or your brand, she will make you look good. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but thank you all for tuning in from Arlo, Arkansas. This has been Drinka Rights with the Yamina coming. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And I'll just sign off with saying um, you can follow me on Instagram at Yam the Creator. Yam is with two M's. Follow me on Facebook, Yamina Cummings. I don't know. If you if you see my name up there, that's the best way to tell you to spell it. <laughs> um, and then just check out my website, design360lens.com. All right.